Okay, so, <clears throat> um, these are the dry foods that I use. So these I kind of mix all together into that little mix bottle you see over there. That's a color enhancing one I'm trying out. And then this one is for my marbled crayfish and snail snails. So one thing to keep in mind when I talk about dry food is that all my fish are really small. <laughs> <coughs> they're all really small and in the wild they are all micro predators they all eat small worms and crustaceans and things like that so keep that in mind when I talk about the dry foods that I feed my fish all my dry foods are really small in size and they are all very high in protein because they're all carnivorous with the exception of the marbled crayfish and my snails. So all my fish are um, micro predators. So I choose foods that, um, uh, these in particular, that are high in protein and small in size. Okay, so these are the foods I mix together kind of as a general uh, pellet mix for my fish. So every time I feed, every scoop has a bunch of different things in it. This is just a better pro thing that I'm repurposing and using to mix my food in. One thing <clears throat> is to keep in mind is once you open um, your food, its effectiveness, we'll say, starts to go down. And I didn't really think about this a lot before. And then I started reading articles about, you know, like fish food can degrade quite quickly once it's exposed to air and light. So what I started doing is opening these things and then storing them in my wine cooler so that they're at a cooler temperature. I think in the future, like for example, the next time I get Baslier's Biofish Food, who knows when, because it's not here in the United States. <laughs> then I'm going to divide it up and um, kind of freeze um, and, and freeze parts of it in a vacuum sealed bag. But as of right now, the best I can do is um, open the original containers as infrequently as possible by mixing small portions of it in here and my fish room is pretty small and my fish are pretty small I go through one of these in about a month so um, I know you guys with the big fish are probably like what <laughs> but I feed mainly live and frozen thawed food and then I feed pellet foods I mean I feed them like once every other day something like that but again um, some of my fish don't even take pellet food. Like I've tried to get my pygmy sunfish onto pellet food for years. I've had them since 2011 and they just, I'm like six generations in and they still won't take pellet food. So anyway, side rant over. <clears throat> um, so these, this one, Azu, I got this from one of my friends who got it from one of his friends <laughs> um, that lives in, um, I believe they, they are in China. And this fish food, um, I, my fish like it. And um, my, my friend that gave it to me is a killifish keeper. And so they're always looking for good food, you know. Um, food that is slow sinking is the best for most types of fish um, because the food stays in the water column longer. And, um, you want to look at the ingredients. So, where's the ingredients list? Hold on. Here we go. So, if you look at the ingredients, they're very, very open about it. We only use premium shrimp meat. Okay. These are the things that they have in there. Try and stay away from things that only use, that list fish meal and wheat meal and stuff as the first thing. So fresh fish, Norwegian seaweed, then there's some binders, wheat churn, so on and so forth. At least that's what they say. I don't know. I'm not a fish nutritionist, but um, I do know my fish 
really like the food and they grow well on it and that's good enough for me so I have this I have another one excellent bits this one's called this one's a little larger so for me large is like like this this new life spectrum grow I have to get the grow because they're 0.5 millimeter sinking pellets this is like the largest I would give my fish again I have tiny fish this is the largest pellet that I give my fish is this so um new life spectrum made from whole Antarctic krill no soybean um, says in the ingredients whole fish whole Antarctic krill seaweed all this stuff looks good love that stuff this is my ultimate food and you can see it's already old no um, this is the ultimate for me dr. Baslier biofish food um, there's only one place I've been able to find it in the U.S. from professional fish keepers in Florida. Um, I saw it on Amazon once and grabbed what they had, um, which is this. But I need to get more and just, like I was saying before, stock up, freeze it. Um, this stuff is amazing. I heard about it from my friend in the Netherlands. And, um, you rather, I should stop saying my friend in the Netherlands because he's been on my channel before so Yoop feeds his fish this and I got my first batch when I went to judge a show in Germany and my fish I just noticed my fish started growing like crazy this can feed fish that normally don't like to eat pellets um, they have many different kinds I like to feed all of them garlic forte um, uh, just regular and I always get the medium size because I have small fish. But man, I wish this was in the United States. But um, again, look at that protein. I try and get protein that's over 50%. So 54%, that's pretty good. Um, and let's see, fish and fish derivatives, mollusks, crustaceans, cereals. So anyway, this stuff smells so good to the fish that it makes the fish want to eat other food when it's mixed in with it <laughs> so my fish actually don't really like to eat mls on its own i don't know why it's something about the smell but when i mix it together with the bio fish in here and it just kind of sits together and it all gets the same smell then they go crazy for it so that's what i do with my pellet food i mix them all together um, and then I feed out of here and then these stay sealed in a dark cool place so this is what that pellet mix looks like when you feed it you can see that the pellets sink quite slowly uh, NLS sinks faster than the others Azu and Biofish tend to have really good like physical properties of staying near the surface and then falling really slowly and you can see it's a good size it's got um, a lot of different sizes in there for all um, for all different sizes of fish so it's good stuff so another pellet food I'm trying is discus color blue from Sierra I got this for my beta palafina because uh, one of my friends showed it to me and um, his fish had gorgeous blue color, and I was like, oh, I want that for my bed of palafina. And um, I don't know, ingredients, fish meal, let's see, proteins, 51%. My fish like it. I haven't really seen a difference in color from feeding this, and I've been feeding it to them, like, you know, for a couple months. I don't know, I think they're just getting bigger because they look the same color as they were before. So, but anyway, I do feed this one as well. So this is what I feed my marbled crayfish and my snails. Um, I really needed a food that had calcium in it because San Francisco water is so incredibly soft. And I found that as soon as I started feeding my fish, or er, sorry, my um, marbled crayfish and snails this, their growth skyrocketed and their shells look so much better. Um, 
Maybe this is why she looks so lovely in dark brown. I'm talking about my crayfish, obviously. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this, I really like this stuff. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the food tour. Thank you, Jackie, for giving me the idea to share what I feed my fish. She has a great food tour. She feeds way more stuff than I do, way more variety in her stuff, which, you know, I need to get better at. If anyone has any ideas for food that my fish would like, then please comment. Um, I love learning about new foods that could benefit my fish, so thank you and have a wonderful day.